so that has given me a wider perspective and that is what i'm going to share today with all of you so what do we cover today two parts to it the section a is going to talk about the recruitment process and guide to different tools of recruitment what as an interviewer do we use tools to recruit and to select the right candidate with the right and section b is going to talk about interview preparation process so let's move on first to tools of recruitment if you know about the stool group discussion that's a very basic step this is an elimination round in most companies today right because when you have a bigger group of people it is very easy to handle uh, to you know understand who are the potentials from the large group so if you have say 200 people you cannot be meeting 200 then for one week and no one has that kind of time today to do 200 people's recruitment right so the first step in almost all hotel chains is a group discussion or a written test but we'll come to that later now what are the do's and don'ts of group discussion right now do's first let's discuss the positives it's very important that when you are speaking in a group discussion you need to time yourself so if you have a group of say 8 participants you'll generally get 10 minutes 8 minutes to speak and 2 minutes to open and close the presentation now when we do a group discussion as students what you feel a lot of times you feel that you know it's very important that i have to speak i have to do all the talking now that does not earn any brownie points what matters is what is the substance that you are talking in that conversation number 1 number 2 are you a group player are you a team player can you take everyone along with you and take and then do a meeting that's what we see that in a group discussion are people comfortable talking to each other now there are a lot of times we'll see that you know people make up and you know they portray a different self maybe in reality you are a very aggressive person but you want to hide it in front of the interviewers and you want to say you know just certain things you want to say and you try to show as a team player let me be very honest the interviewers who come have all been experienced right they all understand the world a little more than you and people a little more than what you think you feel you know right so what happens as an interviewer as a recruiter the person is able to see the person whether he is an aggressive person whether is a team leader whether he can merge along along with the group or not these are things that are visible so be yourself that's most important but whatever you speak we speak to the point don't speak you know unnecessary things and a lot of times in group discussion people generally tend to deflect away from the topic and they reach somewhere else now it's always nice in a group if there is someone who can get that person who's gone out of track back on track right these are a few do's don't never make a group discussion a personal agenda don't make it a fish market all of you don't start talking together all of you uh, please don't ensure that you know i have to speak and everyone is fighting and shouting i have to speak i have to do the intro i'll get more points if i do intro or if i close the conversation nothing like it right even if you speak just one line but that one line has substance you have a chance of getting shortlisted so no point fighting screaming uh, and making it a fish market so we move to the next topic which is written test that's the second tool that we use today a lot of companies believe in using psychometric tests or a pen paper test right some companies like my present company when we did our recruitment last year for management training program what we did was we had a, a numerical ability test right and that was pure arithmetic sums very honestly pure arithmetic 
right? Now, different companies, Novotel, Accor did uh, uh, reasoning, uh, logical and numerical ability tests. So every company does it differently. A lot of companies also do not believe in a written test. Now, between written tests and GD, right, there can be uh, a first step could be written test, second step could be GD, right? These are both interchangeable. Now, how you prepare for the test and what you do, we will be covering that in the how to prepare for interviews in section B, right? So first, let me just tell you briefly about what are the different tools. Now, in a written test also, please understand the timing is very important. So you need to attempt the stuff that you are good at, right? Don't think too much, be yourself. And at one go, whatever comes to your mind, just do it. Of course, other than the numerical ability, which you need to calculate and then do the maths bit, right? The third stage generally is a personal interview, right? Now, what do you do in a personal interview? How, what are the do's and the don'ts? I will cover that later in section B. And right now, I'm only telling you about the tool. Now, in a personal interview, do not become, though the term says personal, but please do not become too personal with your interview panel. It's good to keep that distance. You know, the table that you see in front of you, the social distancing table, I think that table enough tells you that in a personal interview, you just cannot be personal. There has to be a barrier. There has to be a space and gap between you and the person who is interviewing you. A lot of companies, this is another tool, also does something known as assessment center. Those of you who have attended uh, or been a part of the recruitment process have seen when the companies uh, come for the process you would have heard now in india currently it's only intercontinental hotels group who does assessment center other than them none of the hotel companies does a assessment center most companies are reliant on uh, your group discussion and personal interviews very popularly known as gd and pi all right. Now, assessment center is a very, very interesting 360 degree feedback that we get. Now, in a personal interview, you are probably being assessed by one, sometimes two or maximum three people. Whereas in an assessment center, you get judged by six to seven people. Right. So it's a very holistic picture that we get about a candidate in an assessment center. And it's a great tool to be assessed because it gives an all-round picture of how and what kind of potential does a candidate have. Please make your notes and your questions. I will give you enough time to ask questions. That's why I'm kind of hurrying up with the presentation. The next is case study. Now, a lot of hotels, again, uh, hotel companies will give you a case study as a pre-study. Okay, so this is not necessarily in order, right? But then case study is again another tool in which we assess the understanding of business of the person, the business acumen, the financial acumen, the ability to work in a team. Now, if you think that I will write what I want to write, However, you will get caught or you make someone else do the case study for you if it is a pre-assessment, right? As an interviewer, as a recruiter, we always understand what the person is trying to say, whether it is true or whether it is just made up, right? Because case study is not just the sole criteria to assess you. Right? So it is very important to be very, very honest and very sincere when you are doing and be yourself in an interview. That's what matters the most. Now, we finished with the first bit, but a lot of things in section B, which is about interview preparation, will be about the first part, how to handle the first section A. So for the second section, we are going to cover how to present oneself, what all to prepare, very important. Key elements of resume, what to say and what not to say general etiquettes 
and style of walking and talking and finally the grand finale right what is it about so we are going to cover seven topics during this training all right in section b and i think this will be a uh, total coverage for everything that you see here so how do you present yourself very very important your grooming i don't know how many of you have read this book called dare to dream by rabadur mohan singh obroy but that's one book that i love reading over and over again on how important grooming is to anyone it's very very important it's the way that you present yourself that talks volume about you your personality if you think that you know today everything has changed i'm sorry guys nothing has changed in hospitality we still need to look smart professionals right so people will see you as you present yourself so you need to be able to learn to present yourself well now tell me there are two chocolates that you have in front of you when you go to a store one is extremely well uh, cased well presented the other one is normal cadbury chocolate right which one will you buy obviously we all go for looks we we'll pick up the one that looks more presentable right so that's that's how it matters now i'll give another example when we were kids we used to have this general stores wherein people would either keep it in simple packets or you know uh, newspaper wala uh, packets and they would put in the loose item packet wrap it and give it you know this was how i have seen in my childhood compared to visibly today if you go walk into a departmental store the look and feel the appeal is much much more important than anything else right so companies who did not earlier think about marketing their product well packaging their product well are all thinking today of how to develop their packaging right another example ideal example is paper boat okay everyone came in tetra pack right which was difficult because the moment you put in the straw in your juice it would you know immediately gush out right and a lot of times if you're traveling you found it difficult this is a wee paper boat which was the packaging was so beautiful that it kind of took over the market right and that's the in thing today even in airlines until lockdown so presenting yourself what about your grooming how do you do it for men will first cover men I think you all know about this streamed haircut, neat, clean shave, warm smile, feel of confidence, formal dressing, firm handshake, and a correct body posture. Right, uh, Ms. Bhattacharya. Sorry to interrupt, yes? ma'am. Uh, just wanted to check: Are you using the presentation already? I didn't hear you. Are you using the presentation now? Yeah. Are you not able to see? No, we are not able to see the changing slides. Actually, it's just uh, the first slide that we are able to see. Oh, that's very strange. Uh, okay, yeah, this is a problem. I think yeah, now you so, see. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't work. That means in a, a screen slide screen. Oh, you should have told me. I finished ten slides. <laughs> I thought so. Maybe you will take it up later. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not at all. Uh, okay, so this that's is fine. how do you present yourself? This is what I spoke. The next one is this is what so I made it very pictorial so that everyone can have a look and understand. So, trimmed haircut, clean shaved, warm smile, feel of confidence. Now, how do you get that feel of confidence? It is by how you look, how you present yourself, whether you're looking nervous or whether you're very confident, not overconfident. Your dressing speaks a lot about how. you are as a person you know last time when i went for interview i saw a lot of people wearing very jazzy colored uh, uniform so um, not uniform jazzy color jackets okay so we asked them that what is this said no no we saw in the internet that this is the in thing i said you know how much ever in thing it is but we are still very very conservative and we still like our grays and blacks and blues nothing other than that 
A firm handshake. A firm handshake speaks volume. The way you do a handshake speaks volume about a person. Your confidence level, your warmth, you, you as a person, everything is very, very uh, valid when it comes to handshake. And of course, a correct body posture instead of slouching or, you know, bending low or working slowly, any of them. They all are signals that an interviewer gets to understand that the person is not confident enough, right? So a few shades of ties, suits, watch, socks, everything I have put into one, all right, just for you to understand and see. Next is for female. Yes, of course, a lot of like, yes. A lot of girls like to be dressed in a sari, very Indian. So do the interviewers like, so there is nothing wrong in it. Pretty good, right? So it, you can either be dressed in an Indian attire or you can be dressed in a formal business suit, right? A Western business suit. So different colors that you can now, you have to be very, very particular about what you're wearing. Either it's a gray, a blue or a black. Typically no whites, no purples, no reds when it comes to a business suit or a jacket of a different color and a trouser of a different color. It doesn't work like that, right? Very crisp, simple watch. Even if you're wearing, you know, wear something that is a formal blouse that you're wearing, either a shirt white shirt works best or a light you know a peach color or a light green color like the colors i've put here these are the colors to choose or a light blue these are colors to choose for the second point so i'll just quickly show you this slide so which will probably be of help so the first one was how to present oneself second point is what all to prepare so what all to prepare is your prep time Right now you have to understand your clock is ticking and you are already sitting on that time bomb and the time bomb will explode in the months to come. Right. This year, of course, everything's going to be a little delayed, but otherwise that's how it will be. So what about the prep time? What all do you do? Right. This is the time to prepare yourself. Read books right not just your course books but additional books to have sufficient expertise and know-how about the area that you are keen to join read story books read general knowledge books read newspaper awareness of what is happening around you is very important be ready with technical knowledge and very very important please have a complete Complete recap of your industrial training, IT, very important because, uh, you know, when you are unable to answer anything else, your IT saves you. I know today's kids, you all don't have the habit of reading, but it's very, very important. And a lot of people don't get jobs because of this. And in the times to come, hospitality is for the next one to two years is going to be tough because there are no jobs in the market a lot of people a lot of jobs are made redundant in top brands of the world right and this is across the globe that's happening for batches that are going to appear for campus interviews you have to be doubly stronger right so that people companies who are coming choose you select you right there's no time to have fun that's over lockdown over colleges whether they're open not open but you have to be ready with everything the third one is a resume now you know it is very very difficult at times when we read a resume it continues or there are stories and we do not understand it is very important that you make your resume brief crisp right but please mention about your industrial training if there are any highlights any achievements about your during your industrial training please write if you have been a topper in a, a debate competition or you were taking part or doing being a volunteer in this that does not matter 
What have you achieved during your industrial training? That matters. We are not interested to read as a recruiter. You know, champ, singing champion, dancing champion, not required. We don't need singers and dancers in a hotel. We need people who are able-bodied, passionate, and hungry to achieve what they want to do in life. Right? And please put your points in the CV as bullet points. Don't make it a story form. That doesn't go well. A few don'ts now, particularly when we visit colleges, we see all CVs look and read the same. Please ensure that that does not happen, right? All CVs cannot be same because fifty people in a batch or hundred people in a batch are not same. Everyone is unique, so please do not get into the rut of making the same CV. All of you. No fancy hobbies, right? Not required. Even if you have one, keep it with you, right? You can talk about it, but don't write it in the CV. Another thing: don't write something that you don't know or you know very vaguely, right? Don't throw weight around by putting big things or big stuff because you want to, you know, show off. Don't do it because you will be caught. Like a lot of people in hobbies will write reading books, and if the interviewer is also a Every reader will ask you, so which is the last book that you read? Read, and there will be no answer, right? Or the person is stumbling. So don't tell lies. If you don't read a book, that's okay. Not everyone reads a book. Maybe you like you're a sports person, or you're an adventurous person. You like to travel, so write like to travel. Or if you don't like anything, you don't do anything. Don't write it. But be honest. And the last one: don't write long stories. I did this, did that. You know, one full paragraph. Don't do that. That does not work well. What to say and what not to say. So you can see a big black tape on the mouth of the gentleman. So what to say in a job interview? I would love to work here because very important because that shows that you are really hungry. You really need the job. I am pleased to meet you. That's a very very polite greeting. Working together is one of my strengths. But if you are not a team player, don't just say because then it becomes a lie. Because it's very easy to understand whether you are a team player or not. And there are different techniques, different questions that an interviewer asks to understand whether you are a team player or not. Because today, all you need is a team player. And follow up with a thank you note. Thank you so much for taking time to talk today. Right? Very simple. Nothing much. Just a nice thank you at the end of the interview. These are tips for your personal interview. Now, a few don'ts. What not to say? Right. The first slide was what to say, and this is what not to say. Sorry, I'm late. I don't know. I don't have any questions. So when the interview is asking you any questions, it's always nice to ask, even if. Is a simple question about the organization or something like that. I don't know much about your company. Come on, you are supposed to know. If you don't know about the company, what is the homework have you done? Why should the employer take you? I didn't understand the salary and benefits during the presentation. Don't ever talk about salary and benefits at this stage, right? Firstly, you guys are all you know just newcomers to the industry. And talking about salary and benefits, if it has already been shown during the presentation and explained, that's not the time. Speak to your teachers, speak to your faculty. They can get back to you after speaking to the recruiters. But you please do not directly ask this question. Another very irritating question: What are the timings of the job? And this kind of questions, if you ask, it's a sure no, no. Definitely no. And then no slangs, no abbreviations or jargon, right? Because maybe there is some jargon that you say in your college that's famous in your college, but do not expect the whole world to know about it. The fifth topic is general etiquettes. What are they? Greet the interviewer formally, never by first name. Even if they say that you know, you can call me. Hi, I am Polmi, and you can call me by Polmi. Try not to do it. Right, that's not a very in thing. Cell phone on silent and not vibrate. Very, very important. It is very disturbing when you are appearing for an interview or you are writing a, uh, a written test or maybe you are part of uh, the group discussion and you know your phone is vibrating and you are 
firstly your attention goes there and not just your attention everyone else's attention goes there right eye contact and smile very important body language the right body language the way you talk in a lot of interviews when you are walking down the eye from the door till the interview table people see you people observe you the way you are and a firm handshake that talks volumes like i mentioned earlier arrive 15 minutes early if not half an hour let the interviewer take lead of the conversation you don't jump in asking questions you don't take charge let the interviewer take charge all right don't step on the last three word of someone's conversation that is very irritating let the person complete you don't have to show that you know it all even if you know it all don't jump in between a conversation sit up straight and lean slightly forward when you lean slightly forward it means that you are really interested right and when you are completely you know leaning behind leaning back that means that you are you know laid back and leave people with a positive impression about you we all do that right the walk and the talk so walk straight and confident like i said now the reason i have put this picture this is how your mind needs to be third years very very important this is how it needs to be right follow yourself talk slowly with a pause right don't gobble up and don't just jumble up everything because the moment you're speaking very fast there is a chance that you speak wrong things or else the interviewer judges you to be as perceives you to be as a very nervous person right and talk fluent very important don't stammer don't think what you need to talk just talk talk just speak fluently the grand finale we have almost come towards the end of it you can see so what do you do so always always a simple professional wrap up with a hunger with a desire like i said finish with confidence and high energy level now high energy level is something that it if you want to just show it doesn't happen it's something that comes from within right and it is something that you can build up it just goes on and certain people are blessed with it show interest for the job try to understand more so when you know about the company you say this is what i have heard but i would like to know more that shows that you really keen for the job elegant smile and be polite not loud dressing right make it decent not a very um strong perfume not a very bright lipstick for girls for men not a very loud watch or a very uh, showy tie all these things have to be kept in mind never ever so the last slide was always this is what you need to do and never ever ask how was my interview a lot of people even at head of department level they still ask me this question how was my interview it's something that you should not ask never shadow the interviewer while they're still in campus you know what i mean you just don't need to go behind them after them and you know it shows as if you want to be a bootlicker don't do that right doesn't give a good impression and never get personal you don't need to ask about the interviewer's personal life how many kids do you have where do you stay what does your wife do what does your husband do which was your first job whatever the interviewer has said just listen to it you just don't have to ask unnecessary questions to an interviewer so that brings us to the end so the rest of the time i leave it to all of you for any questions that you might have so you can switch on your mics and ask any questions i'll be happy to answer hi right, do we have any questions from anyone uh, yes ma'am you can unmute yourself and ask may i go on uh, go on uh, ma'am i just uh, wanted uh, first of all uh, good morning ma'am this is amrit desai yes 
you are the master of your own destiny there will be people who will try to make you keep quiet but you have to ensure that you speak because there are a lot of lapses in between you know the people who want to speak too much they start speaking and then after say about 4 or 5 minutes there is a lull and there isn't much when people have much to say at that point of time so speak then if you're not getting a chance but generally recruiters ensure that everyone gets a chance from my experience i'm saying i ensure that i always give chance to everyone to speak if someone is not able to speak even then then bad luck can't help however there are also people who have not been able to speak on their own but when given a chance they've spoken so well they've got selected as well does that answer your question amrit yes ma'am it does answer great okay What else? Who else? Ma'am, uh, may I ask another question, please? Yes, please ask. Uh, Ma'am, uh, many of uh, many a times I've heard from my seniors in college and way back in internship when I was in the Imperial New Delhi, they used to tell me that uh, in the HR round, the deciding factors remain unknown. They are not able to know that what was the deciding factor which made them go at the round and which made them uh, which did not allow them to clear the round. So, mm-hmm. we just request you to throw some light on those factors and provide us with some insight, which would help us sure. in going through the HR round. HR, okay. So generally, HR round, uh, it's your behavior, your attitude, different uh, situation-based questions. See, if it is a management training program, uh, a campus interview, for that matter, HR round is not separate. It is mixed along with the operations round. okay that's how uh, most companies do however if anyone does a hr round separately and if it is when you are going to the hotel for an interview and it is not a campus in that case yes a hr round is very important hr round in the first round is a very important round because that is where it gets decided whether the person uh, can first your communication the way you communicate right whether you are a team player so these are questions so every company today has a sex uh, interview questionnaire guide okay and from that we look at uh, whether the person is ready to be sent to the next round or not so this is how we assess and generally today all international companies and even uh, domestic companies uh, hotel chains they all have a set questionnaire if they're not following too bad but then there is a set questionnaire on what to see and most important is your personality your communication your ability to be as a team player so these are two three important things that we see and the attitude yes of course thank you so much ma'am pleasure amrit Uh, we have the next question from Aryan Yadav. Mm-hmm. Aryan, you may ask your question. Aryan, are you there? All right. So, Aryan, am I audible to you? I think we'll go to the next student. So, Aryan, you may ask a question. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, we're on this side. Mm-hmm. Uh, from the final year, uh, ma'am. My only question is uh, that uh, companies are starting to lay off their employees just because they are not having the right amount of money in their kitty right now. And we pretty much see that happening, not in the form of laying off employees, but selecting few uh, candidates who are in the uh, in the crazy list, who are in the top list uh, for the coming year. So, ma'am, do you see any change in the recruitment process? in the coming year maybe for 2021 and 
Absolutely. I, I am presuming there would be now see the entire COVID situation is such wherein nothing is known to anyone. Everything is absolutely unpredictable, right? But uh, if there is no business, it is not because hotels don't have money in their kitty because guests are not coming. So there is no business. So if there is no business, you don't need people. The very existence of employees is guests, right? The reason for employees to be there working in a hotel is guests. So if there are no guests, so then there are uh, obviously there is no requirement of people, right? So obviously the recruitment pattern would change, but we are all very hopeful in the industry. So are the seniors in the industry, my super seniors as well. And that's what we hear and understand that uh, hopefully things should get better. And once things get better, it will again, you know, uh, will all spring back to action and they will always be. But probably the recruitment phase might be delayed. Right. If the way it would start in August, probably we would not start in August. That would get delayed. OK. Uh, Ma'am, I have a question too. My name is Muskan Dugul. I'm from the final year. Uh -huh. Ma'am, it's regarding the previous question. So uh, I also got some news that uh, the jobs are taking off because of this situation. So uh, if we see in the long run, the mm -hmm. consumers will come, but the category will change. There won't be less uh, leisure guests. There would be business guests. So mm -hmm. why are the hotel laying off their new employees as well as the existing employees? See, uh, you have to understand having employees uh, means at this point of time, it is a liability, right? Because you're not able to pay, you don't have any income. Uh, no businessman will pay from their pocket. Please understand. So all these different brands that you see, Marriott, IG, Hyatt, Hilton, they're only brands, okay? Uh, they set guidelines. However, ultimately, it is the ownership who takes a final call on all payments. Now, if the ownership does not have money, which in case, see, we earn, we spend that much. Right? Any owner cannot, while sitting at home, pay employee salary for five, six months. So what else do they do? So easier, a lot of companies are sending people on furlough leave, okay, which is a leave without pay. And people are okay with it. With it. Some companies are saying, no, we will not need, right? So it's very different. It, it is completely based on every hotel company and owner, how they want it to be. Like the other day, I was interviewing someone from an Indian brand and they said that the ownership just doesn't want to lay off people. So he has sent people on a furlough leave, a leave without pay. And we shall call back the moment uh, the situation is better. Right. So you have to understand if there is no business, no one will want to take the liability. It is not just the salary. There are other statutory components alongside which you have to pay anyway. So where does the person get the money to pay that? If there is no business, if his hotels are not functioning, where will he get money from? You have to understand. Absolutely, man. Right. So these are tough times. And even uh, at least hospitality, I understand with the kind of situation we are, uh, you know, hit. I find people in other companies are laying off. I think there has been a lot of scare factor also, which is leading to layoffs. And we are probably aping a lot what US is doing. Yes, ma'am. Right. So that's there. But then we'll have to take it as it comes. But in India, uh, hospitality has gone really bad and we have had no support from the government. Right. So it is not easy for the owners to pay all the money and, you know, to run a hotel. It is not just employee salary. There are certain fixed costs. Of course, the employee salary is a fixed cost and which is a huge liability after uh, that's one of the topmost after your HVAC and HLP. Rather HLP, heat, light, and power. Right, so it's a huge cost. So even if your hotels are shut, there is uh, government is not giving you even one pesa relaxation to not pay your HLP. So there are fixed costs which are there. So where else do you cut your costs if you are not earning something? 
right if tomorrow your parents lose their jobs god forbid but i'm giving a very practical situation you will first try to survive with the savings but then there will be a challenge after that right if you don't turn so that's exactly what is happening so instead of shutting down the hotels forever and closing business the owners are not paying and sending people either on furlough or sending people uh, you know uh, cutting jobs off and cut, reducing positions the only business that is coming today is all quarantine business so how long can you survive with a hotel that had a arr of 8000 9000 12000 if you are surviving with 3000 arr are you earning enough to run all your cover all your costs no you are not so what do you have to do then when our earning goes low what do we do if we were having chicken or three days non veg earlier now we will cut it down to maybe after two weeks once or once in a month why do we do it because we don't have the money and that is the reason not the owners who are throwing out people are very happy doing what they do but there is no option thank you ma'am okay muskan um we have the next question from khushi verma uh, mm-hmm. she is asking if there would be any change uh, in the recruitment process after covid especially for the mp program so will there be any uh, thing that the recruiters will focus on particularly probably we will all uh, look towards uh, to maintain social distancing i think we would all have to look at more online uh, interviews right uh, that's that's what is going to happen because uh, calling so many people we don't know there is community spread happening at this point of time so till such time at least the next year till such time the vaccine is up and running uh, we will have to you know Uh, get the new normal as in we will have to go by uh, doing online sessions we have to do online interviews because recruiters would also be scared to go and visit a college campus right or calling people to the hotel unnecessary crowding we don't have so much space so much of luxury that you know you maintain a social distancing even in uh, the hotel to ensure that there if 10 candidates are called all 10 can be kept in 10 separate rooms we don't have so going forward video calls video cvs these are what will be the new norms thank you mr tatasaga anybody thank else you. has any kind of question all right so basically the students are thinking about their question i have a question okay uh if we compare uh, the laying of pattern uh, for the indian chain indian hotel chain and the international chain what are you views mm-hmm. about that is what i have seen is that the international chains are actually laying off more people as compared to the indian hotel chain so okay i will tell you i'll tell you something international hotel chains are uh, laying off more people i agree with you but uh, domestic chains are also doing they are quite about it they are doing it quietly the international chains are making more noise about it everyone is doing even uh, I, i didn't want to name uh, take the name of the company but then even taj uh, who we are thinking are doing it Uh, it's again maybe probably for the taj owned hotels it is a different story but people who are not in uh, you know they are in managed hotels where company where the ownerships are different it's a different story even taj is throwing out people right so that is not the right story that only international chains are everyone is doing it's just that their technique is different some people are quite about it some people are gaga about it that's it everyone is doing it All right. Thank you. Um, any questions from the students? Any more questions? Anyone would like to ask? Yes, ma'am. I would like to ask. My name is Sunny, and I am from Pakistan, 2018. Stu- I am currently in my. Stuti, just yes, move the volume a little bit because it is hurting. Um, now is it okay? Ma'am? Yeah, better. I was wondering, uh, would you rather hire a graduate student who has a lot of confidence, mm-hmm. but when he is in the job, the job that he is doing for, or would you just take the mic in front of your uh, mouth, Suti? Your voice is just going in and out. Ma'am, now is it okay? Ah, uh, better. Hmm. So, would you rather hire a student who has a lot of confidence, but has a little 
technical knowledge or a person with a lot of technical knowledge but no uh, not uh, not much uh, people skills or much confidence no it does not work like that stuti it's very important uh, to have a right balance of both whether it is confidence and technical know how because if there is someone who is not a team player does not have confidence only has technical knowledge will not fit into a team so it does not work so it has to be a right balance between technical knowledge between your uh, personality with whether you are a team player or not how confident you are all of it is accounted for sometimes we will probably discount one point but not uh, team player is not something we will or confidence is not something that we will discount technical knowledge even sometimes we still you know take it that okay chalo little bit less also can handle but not someone who is not presentable who does not have the right attitude or is not a team player that will never happen so ideally you need it's a mix of all does that answer yes thank you okay okay uh, we have one more question from varun mm -hmm. so we don't have uh, the experience to to improve ourselves when the market revives back again as compared to people who have years of work experience what do we uh, have as pressures to showcase ourselves to companies post covid and if yes then why would they hire pressure okay good question very valid question uh, see in a hotel it is always a mix between pressures a little experience more experience because there are different designations you don't become a manager right from day one right so we also need people who will start their career who we can teach who is like a fresh you know fresh clay who can be molded so again i said during the presentation if you remember that especially for you guys for the next two years the second years or the third years you have to be above the edge so that you are better than the ones that are available in the market and as a fresher also you this is a huge competition so you have to prove yourself better than the others otherwise it will be very difficult yes but then freshers are always required we don't just stop that we don't want freshers we need freshers right because we need people to be able to start off and bring new ideas fresh ideas to the company to the organization so there is no doubt about it and every recruiter understands that and they follow that so there is no scare but for every position so as to say it is challenging because everyone there are enough of uh, extraordinary caliber people also roaming about in the market today as of present day without a job in hand right so it is there so if you think that oh i am the best that doesn't happen anymore and that is for all whether it's a, someone is a fresher or someone is whatever you are getting you have to polish yourself to the best to the utmost so that you get an opportunity thank you ma'am uh, one more question from my end uh, mm -hmm. Uh, related to the students only. Actually, a lot of our students get a little uh, disheartened when uh, the empty positions, obviously, in the companies are very limited, and they get filled up very fast. So, a lot of them get disappointed when the empty positions are all filled, and uh, mm. they have to actually start applying for maybe the uh, starting positions mm. or the lower positions. Mm. So, what do you suggest them on that? See, you have to understand that in a hotel, you cannot have hundred managers. right so obviously empty positions will always be limited in a school you had captains vice captains head girl sports captain this captain so in a batch of say 80 people or 200 people in combining four sections if you have 200 people you only have certain portfolios set in 8 10 right not 200 became the head girl and not 200 became the sports captain or whatever house captain you did not so that is how life is you have to accept it so you have to polish yourself to be there because not everyone will make it but again having said that it is not necessary that you have to be a dia manager even when you join as an entry level you can do really well it depends on when you have joined as a entry level position at an entry level position how well are you performing and how good you can you know 
move on how fast can you move on to the next position with the sheer hard work and there is no shortcut in our industry right if you think that you know if i butter a certain boss and you know maska baji will help me or a shortcut will help me it does not help that is very short lived so you have to have a lot of hard work and there is no point getting this hurted a lot of people do not start as a management training i will give you the example of uh, ms shelja singh who is the head of hr uh, vp hr in uh, obra hotels she could not attend appear for ocld because she had chicken pox she could not appear for the interview right she joined at an entry level and she has risen up and see where she is moved on in life and she joined in operations and then she moved into learning and development and then into human resource so i do not agree on that point that you feel desert and that's that's a very you know a small time feeling that you are feeling sad about it it's a momentary feeling don't uh, you just you know move ahead with it move ahead in life and do what best what is coming in future for you because everyone in a batch of 50 60 year in your college will not get in management trainees right Uh, please understand there is a huge competition and every company has limited number i will give you an example my company we had uh, about 30 positions 30 odd positions we could not fill up had for corporate trainees we had 15 positions and we could not go beyond 10 we did not get the right people so we said okay fine we have visited whatever we wanted to visit uh, whichever college it is done we will not hire we will take less so less is more so you have to equip yourself to be able to get and there are a lot of options lot of opportunities available in the market you first need to make up your mind that whether you want to stay in hotels whether you want to move into something else you your priority in life has to be very clear it's not that if i'm not getting hotels then i will go to airlines if i'm not getting airlines then i will go to banking if i'm not getting banking then i'll go to fms you not like that you need to be very clear that if i'm doing a hotel course i will get into a hotel and this is what i want to do in life that you have to be very very uh, clear about so uh, thank you sir uh, there is one last question from aditi saini who is asking uh, the qualities that you need to be a kitchen management training a management training i think if you have listened to my entire uh, uh you would have got that answer there abhishek uh firstly we said like i said uh, it's very important that we always look for a team player a team player is something it is a team player we look at whether the person can work in our setup in our organization maybe you don't get a uh, management training organization a but then probably your qualities fit into organization b but whatever said and done more or less all the companies are pretty similar when you look for someone right uh, firstly team player secondly your emotional intelligence very important how mature are you do you understand the emotional how emotionally intelligent right it's no more iq it is all about eq today so that's the second thing of course your grooming your confidence a little bit mix of everything right your technical know how how confident how conversant are you with the industrial training what have you learned during your industrial training do you remember or have you just you know done a time pass during your industrial training so all of this matters so it's it's a overall uh, presentation of yourself which is a mix of confidence grooming presenting yourself your technical know how your high eq all of it whether you're a team player so it's about a combination of everything it's not just one thank you ma'am pleasure abhishek abhishek uh ma'am another question from abhik uh, he's asking as a recruiter how would you differentiate between a player and a team player in terms of uh, group discussion how do we as a candidate could prepare ourselves uh, with uh, as as being a team player maybe in gd okay see in a team when you are a team player you will give chance to people you will ensure now you, if you think that okay by listening to this tip next time when we have a gd i will do it it shows in a person's attitude we understand people that much being in this uh, uh, you know domain of human resource we tend to understand having seen so many people that what does the person want 
so it is not very difficult but yes quick tips on this we see how the person is reacting right some people tend to get angry if someone wants to keep you want to speak you are not getting a chance you get angry you become aggressive so these are things that says or you know you don't want to give a chance to the others to talk it's only i i i so these are those quick little things that gives us but this is not all we see a person and we understand whether this person can be but yes even in a gd we go wrong as an interviewer we go wrong maybe we think that this person is a team player but then you know that is the reason in any interview process there are so many rounds so if we have missed out something in one when we move on to the other we come to know so that's how it goes so that's the reason we have so many different rounds in an interview till you finally are declared as being selected Uh, ma'am i wanted to ask uh, as to if if as a candidate i am letting others speak so hmm. that will play a part on my positive role but those are the specific reasons as to why somebody win or get selected in a group discussion right so if i am letting an ex person talk hmm. and putting myself back that i'll speak the next or in the next group discussion uh, group discussion so hmm. that can be a reasons for my uh, uh, not getting selected or Well, that is, I told you, you are the master of your own destiny. So, if you think I will give chance to everyone, you speak your point. I'm not mm. saying you be quiet and you become, you know, the martyr. I'm not telling you to become a martyr. Please mm. speak your point, but then don't cut the other person down. If you're not getting a chance, wait. You will get a chance. Ten minutes in a group of in a group discussion is good enough time. And if you don't speak, anyways, the interviewer, the recruiter, gives you a chance to talk. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Um, we have another question. Actually, we've almost uh, reached the timeline that we had given you. No, uh, I'll like take the last question. No, no, please, uh, please ask me the question. So the last question is from Amrit. Uh, he's asking the uh, students who were not able to complete their IT due to COVID situation. Will that uh, have any drawbacks for them in their interview? I I couldn't get you, Rashmit. Can you repeat? So uh, he's asking that uh, the student. There were a lot of students who were not able to complete their industrial training due to uh -huh. COVID. So mm -hmm. will that have any drawback on uh, their interview? No, not at all. How much ever you have finished, you should be very thorough with whatever areas you have covered. That's it. What you have not done, every interviewer understands that students this time could not finish their internship. We all know that. So if you say that there is no harm, but if you have done three months in those three months, if you are thorough of about what you have done, that's it. That's enough. And probably even the colleges, you all will have to see if there is any, you know, any kid who is missing out on any particular area which he or she should have done. Uh, you should reach out to the hotels once the hotels are open and you know running, up and running. You should reach out to them to assist in uh, getting some kind of internship done, or you know, there are different ways where the training manager can do sessions to help the students, whatever they have missed out. But that the college will have to take uh, responsibility in speaking and reaching it out to the hotels to see what best can be done for the interns who have missed their training. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We we've actually planned that already. Uh, and we will definitely be in touch uh, with the hotels. Okay. Yeah, that's very right. important. Otherwise, they will miss out on their core areas. Maybe you know, in the first three months or four months, if they have done the training, some uh, some of them might have not been able to do the department of their choice, the area where they finally want to specialize and join. Possible that that was there probably towards the end of the training. So you know, they should not suffer. So there is always something that can be worked out. Right. True. Thank you so much, Mr. Acharya. That was an actually very insightful session, and I'm sure the students uh, will have a lot of uh, benefit from this. And uh, any end note, anything that you'd like to say to the students as an end note, maybe? No, I think I spoke enough. I told them whether it's uh, during the presentation or during the question and answer session. I think you have to work really hard, and it's a tough. Thing. So you have to be above the edge to be able to compete as a fresher. So don't waste time. Concentrate. 
whatever you have missed go through your faculty and ensure that you get that kind of expertise from the industry right and your technicals and the rest is your presentation that only you can do no one else can so groom yourself that's it thank you so very much lovely having all of you around thank you very much rashmi thank you thank you for that chair it was a pleasure having you with us thank you so much thank bye you bye. so much have a good day bye bye you too bye thank you students have a good day